What's going on, everybody? How are you doing? My name is Dr. Sami Baya. Please welcome back to my channel. What is narcissism? That is the title of today's episode. Hey, if you're watching this video and you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please spare a second or two and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. Choose the all option. That's the only way you get notified each time I upload a new video. Hey, what does it out there that Dr. Sami Baya YouTube channel? is a very 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 educative channel it's one of the best as far as narcissistic relationships and information is concerned so please tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend about it let's build each other up now the term narcissism is commonly used to describe anyone who is self-absorbed narcissism describes someone who exhibits narcissistic traits and they may have a personality disorder which we are calling it narcissistic personality disorder. Now, a personality disorder affects the way a person thinks, behaves, and relates to others. According to research, the word narcissism is derived from the name of a Greek mythological figure, that is Narcissus, the son of a god, who fell in love with his own reflection in the waters of a spring. And that is according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. So, everyone has narcissistic tendencies from time to time. However, those tendencies become a personality disorder when a person's ability to function and engage with others is affected. People with narcissistic personality disorder demonstrate extreme confidence, they crave attention, and they show little empathy for other people. However, underneath this facade of confidence, they typically suffer from vulnerable self-esteem that requires constant validation, accompanied by feelings of sadness or inadequacy and in and an inability to form lasting relationships. And all this is according to the Mayo Clinic. Someone who's diagnosed with narcissism tends to exhibit certain traits that suggest they are superior and these are they consider themselves very important. Narcissists they don't take criticism very well. They have an outsized sense of their own potential success. They have a need to be admired. So if feeling superior or having grandiose ideas about your place in the world is getting in the way of your living a happy life, then it's time to talk to a mental health professional to discuss treatment to help you live your best life. Grandia, grandiose narcissism is associated with displays of superiority, entitlement, and extraverted behavior. So vulnerable narcissism also involves self-absorbed behavior, but it is associated with self-consciousness, insecurity, and introversion. According to the Mayo Clinic, the signs and symptoms of narcissism include an exaggerated sense of self-importance, a sense of entitlement requiring excessive and constant admiration, behaving in an arrogant manner that is perceived as conceited, boastful, or pretentious, an exaggeration of talents and achievements, a preoccupation with fantasies about beauty, power, and success, feeling superior and seeking relationships only with similarly accomplished people, a tendency to monopolize conversations, looking down on and belittling people, taking advantage of others, an unwilling or inability to recognize others' feelings and needs, envying, envy of others, a belief that others are jealous, an insistence of having the best in terms of property and position. So people with narcissism also have a very hard time accepting criticism, which can result in difficulties at work and in relationships. Symptoms that can affect the ability to connect with others and function effectively include becoming angry or impatient if they don't get special treatment, feeling easily slighted, reacting with rage or contempt to make oneself seem superior, difficulty regulating emotions and behavior, difficulty dealing with stress and handling change, feeling depressed if they fall short of their own expectations, secret feelings of insecurity, shame, vulnerability, and humiliation, 
So what are the causes and risk factors of narcissism? According to the Mayo Clinic, the exact cause of narcissism is unclear. It is likely a combination of factors which are environmental. That is receiving too much adoration or, criti or criticism early in life from parents, for example. Then the other cause is genetic and the other one is neurobiological. Years ago, many psychiatrists thought narcissism was caused by parents not providing children with enough love or attention. Now, it is very clear that not recognizing and helping children manage setbacks can also be problematic. Narcissism is more common in men, in men than women. It can often begin in teenage years or early adulthood. So while children can display narcissistic tendencies, it may be more an indication of their age and stage of development. So narcissism at an early age doesn't necessarily mean that an individual will display narcissistic behavior later on in life. In fact, it is normal for a very small child to be, to be narcissistic and believe that small accomplishments are major. While it is good for parents to indulge this age-appropriate narcissism, it becomes developmentally important in later years to help older children recognize and manage failure. So, how is narcissism diagnosed? Now, according to Mayo Clinic, there are no lab tests to diagnose narcissism. Diagnosis is usually made based on several factors, according to the Mayo Clinic. And this is a physical exam to rule out any physical problems. An in-depth psychological evaluation. An assessment of criteria for diagnosis based on the latest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, that is the DSM-5, which was published by the American Psychiatric Association. Now, a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder in the DSM-5, that is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, of mental disorder includes this criteria difficulty living your life setting goals based on getting others approval and reasonably high standards and seeing yourself as exceptional problems with interpersonal relationships inability to empathize with others feelings difficulty with intimacy being antagonistic having feelings of entitlement, excessive attempts to attract and be the focus of the attention of others, seeking admiration. Now, a diagnosis of uh, narcissism requires that these personality traits continue over time, are consistent in different situations, are not normal based on the person's stage of development or their social or cultural environment and they are not the result of drug or alcohol use or a medication the person is taking according to past research so prognosis of narcissism the outcome for people with narcissistic personality disorder might depend on different factors such as how severe their condition is whether they have other psychiat psychiatric disorders and how they respond to treatment so living with narcissistic personality disorder poses challenges but with therapy it is possible to change thought patterns and behavior over time someone with narcissism can learn to improve their quality of life and relationships many people with narcissistic personality disorder experience symptoms for much of their lives and oftenly, behavior patterns in narcissism start in adolescence or early, early adulthood, and the, it continues. So, the treatment and medication options for narcissism, according to Mayo Clinic, is that narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder is treated with psychotherapy or talk therapy. While medication is not given specifically to treat narcissism, Drugs may be prescribed for related symptoms such as anxiety or depression. Psychotherapy can help someone with narcissistic personality disorder relate to other people in a more compassionate and positive way. How effective the treatment will be depends on how severe the condition is. Personal, couples or group therapy can help people with narcissistic personality disorder learn some of the new emotional skills. For example, accepting and maintaining personal and work relationships. Recognizing and accepting what they can and can't do so that it's easier to handle criticism or failures.
Understanding and regulating feelings. Understanding and regulating issues of self-esteem. Not pursuing goals that aren't reachable and embracing goals that are. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, can be very helpful for, pe for people with narcissism. CBT is a type of psychotherapy that focuses on solutions and strategies to change harmful behavior patterns. For narcissism, cognitive behavioral therapy can help, some, can help people identify negative beliefs and behaviors they have and replace them with healthful, positive ones according to to research. Psychotherapy can also help people with narcissistic personality disorder deal with strong reactions and emotions that emerge during treatment. So people with narcissism may not initially see the value in therapy. They may not see the value in therapy or they may or have difficulty sticking with their treatment, managing the condition. It can take a long time and the person must really want treatment. So that is the catch there. Initially, they may not see the value of this psychotherapy. And they may also have difficulty sticking with the treatment in managing this condition. So, in short, managing this narcissistic personality or managing this narcissism can take a long time and the person must 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 really want treatment thank you for watching this video if you like it please hit the the, uh, the, the the like button give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that way every time i upload a new video you get notified about it knowledge is power information is power and learning is the superpower i love you all to the moon and back god bless you catch you later in the next video